It's great to have you back on the show. Welcome. Nice to be here, Shana. How are you? We're, we're looking at this double-digit decline in the stock. All sorts of misses, top and bottom line, and, and the outlook. Sumit, what happened? So what we saw in Q4 um, is what I would consider the tug, right? The essential tug between uh, the fundamentals that underpin our business, you know, strong demand, good customer momentum, strategies intact, you know, balanced against the macroeconomic volatility that a lot of companies are facing right now. And so when you look at the, the core fundamentals, what gives us encouragement is to be able to look at them and say, well, the consumer is healthy, the strategy is intact, and momentum is positive. I mean, if you look at it, we delivered over 24% year-over-year growth on top of really strong comps uh, you know, from last year, you know, sort of also showcasing the strength, underlying strength in the business model. And we're really happy with that. And on the profitability side, you know, there's some disruptions in supply chain and there's some near-term pressures that uh, you know, are transient in nature and that we're acting against, uh, which essentially are, 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 are causing some pressure in Q4. And we're already seeing sequential improvement as we've come into Q1. So just to be clear, you, you have seen growth moderate. You were in the 20s, now you're in, in the mid-teens. I guess the question investors are trying to figure out is, is whether these are transitory problems like supply chain or whether there's a slowdown in the growth story. What would you tell them? So I think actually there's you know continued acceleration in the growth story, actually. When you look at us pre-pandemic, we were adding revenue at the rate of $1.2, $1.3 billion. And when you normalize for the past kind of two and a half years, we're actually adding revenue at the rate of $1.5 to $1.7 billion. In fact, when you look at our guidance for this year, you know, we're providing a guidance of 15 to 17% top line on top of 24% that we delivered in 2021. And it would be actually closer to 20% if it weren't the supply chain environment that we're dealing with right now. So, you know, continuing to add over $1.5 billion of growth uh, on a year-over-year -year basis and high teens, in my opinion, is actually really strong. And so we're, we're, we're bullish about our position as we've always been. Plus, when you look at the market growth, we're actually growing 1.6 times the market rate. So in that way, we're taking share. And, uh, you know, that's also a good side of the story. So overall, we're, we're pleased with the way that we're delivering results here. What about churn? Are, are, isn't that going up? Are you losing customers with these price increases or, or maybe as brick and mortar stores open up? I, I was talking to Peco CEO Ron Coughlin earlier in the week. He, he, Peco, they're, they're, he was saying it's recession proof, it's inflation proof. They're seeing very strong results, not, nothing like what we just saw from you. So I think the results actually are really strong, delivering 24% growth uh, you know, on top of the 45% growth that we delivered last year and taking share growing at 1.6 times the market, I would say the results continue to be strong. Now, when you look at you know, the pet, pet recession or oh, pet uh, industry, it is recession proof. When you look at 2007, 2008, you know, most consumer spending actually went down during that time period and pet spending went up two to 6% during the same amount of time. And we're actually seeing something very similar happen right now, because when you look at the core consumables demand or demand for healthcare or demand for staples, and premium products in healthcare in, in pet, it's actually really resilient. And any kind of you know pressure that the consumer is feeling right now is likely hard goods or discretionary purchases, which are of course you know weighed down by the recent inflationary pressures that the consumers actually see. So overall, uh, you know, I would reiterate that the fundamentals that drive our strategy in the pet uh, kind of industry overall uh, seem to be fairly intact and. Uh, you know, we're uh, really excited about a 2022 where the team's working hard to overcome the supply chain pressures and at the same time take care of consumers that have remained loyal and engaged with us.